Welcome back to our uh, episode, uh, pick your number, I don't really know. Uh, today's workflow is going to kind of build off last week. Last week was 1D meshing where we talked about beam elements and maybe like a stiffened panel type of thing. Uh, but today, really excited to talk about connectors because if there is one thing that I have noticed within aerospace and all the companies that I work with is that it takes way too long to connect models together. Okay. And uh, there's all sorts of different, you know, patch transcripts and PCL and different stuff you have. But uh, I, I really like what we have within our connectors workflow. Um, so that's what I'm going to show today. Uh, I think it's going to be quite great. So remember last time we kind of left off, I made these little wagon wheels. Uh, I'll just do it again because that's what I always say that I'm going to do. Uh, you know, some type of like RB2 or RB3, we came in and grabbed the edge. You know, I grabbed this edge and edge uh, there, made that one, and then went over here. I was kind of making a, a dummy, you know, beam. And then we'd come and say, well, if I wanted this to be a bolt of some sort, you know, grab and grab. And then we'd come back to like our 1D mesh and we'd uh, come back and grab these nodes. Oops, not that node. You know, the middle of this with the middle of this. Beep, beep, uh, beam, whatever, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that would kind of how we'd have to go and make a bolt. We'd have to do that on all the holes and all the models and everywhere, and it would just be super annoying and take forever. So um, what connectors do is it does, you know, that whole workflow in a click or two, which is great. So what I'm going to start is just some of the basic stuff, and then uh, we'll talk about a little more arrow stuff. I will say that a lot of the arrow type of fasteners, so those things like Rutman and Huth and Hilox, um, those in the, the newest, the next release, this dot one release, the so 2022.1, those have all been ported over. So right now I'm going to kind of work on generic fasteners. Just keep in mind that this arrow formulation of fasteners will be here next. So, okay. Uh, under the connectors, it has its own ribbon. It's super special. Uh, there is a connector browser, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up just to have that around. Uh, we also have what are called connector controls, um, and connector controls are essentially rules that your methods group, um, cross your fingers that you have one. Uh, I've found out more and more companies don't really have a methods group anymore. Um, but connector controls are essentially the rules that are going to define a connector. And it's probably important now to tell you what a connector is. A connector is two things. It is this idea of what it connects, right? So do I want to connect to this, this uh, you know, frame to the skin? Do I want to connect this rib to the frame? Do I want to connect, you know, what do I want to connect? Okay, so this idea of what. And then the next idea is how. How do I connect them? Do I connect them with, say, just an RBE element? Do I want an RB2, RB3? Do I want a C-Bush element? Do I want some combination of RB2, C-Bush, C-Beam, some coincidence? C-Bush? Like, you know, the, the how I connect things together is going to be on you, and that's what's defined by this connector control. Okay, so the connector control are the rules for how things get connected together, and the connector also holds what it connects together. So what and how come together, connector, happy, happy, happy. Okay. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a point connector, right? We can think of a point connector as maybe like a rivet, something that is infinitesimally small that doesn't necessarily have an area to spread out on, okay? So as I enter the point connector tool, it says, well, you can pick things like nodes, points, lines, different types of options to, to pick. So node for me is, is going to be fine. And I'm just going to start super duper simple. I'm going to say, I want this node, right? This node on this uh, frame part, okay? And kind of looking at it, I don't get much feedback because of one of two things. And, you know, maybe one of my issues is I'm a little too honest. Uh, one of the biggest pitfalls, especially for working on like legacy models and things, is that this tries to default um, to, uh, uh, parts. We want to really make sure that the link type right now is components because we haven't even talked about parts yet. So I don't want that. And then the next thing is going to be this tolerance, right? So 
this is it's saying you know i understand do you want me to connect here but i i'm searching in a tolerance and i can't find anything else to connect to uh, so i need to bump this up i think to about 25 in this model and hit apply okay <clears throat> and i'm gonna hit uh and this is just gonna be automatic by tolerance that should be fine okay so i've i've selected this node so i've essentially selected what i want to connect i want to connect this node to anything surrounding it that's within this tolerance but i haven't said how i want to connect it right so it says it's undefined and this is where you need to have a connector control so again if your methods group developed this this is fine if not we have some ones that are in here that are pretty generic um or as far as the type goes but usually what i see especially with arrow um, we're going to do one of two things the RB3s are quite common. This one's very easy to do. Um, again, change my tolerance. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to come back and say that connector control probably should have changed its name, but whatever. Okay. And I'm going to hit Realize. And what I see here might be a little hard to see, especially red on red, is that this is actually a little red, red dot, which means that the connector got created, but it failed to realize um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and look at this. Uh, there usually is a pretty good um, error message about connectors and why they failed. Okay, this is saying it only found one layer. Um, I'm going to have to put in two in here real quick. I will right click and I will uh, realize. C for connector, we can grab it, we can right click, we can edit this point connector. Okay, let me just double check to make sure. I don't know why that's been there. Uh, it's searching for all of my parts, it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, and I'm gonna hit apply. So what I have done now is essentially I've said I've picked a point and I said I want you to kind of connect this node, which happens to be connected to this frame, to the skin via an RB3 uh, like this. Okay, so you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, that's that seemed like a lot of work, and I will admit to you that that you know making one at a time is not how you're going to realize the uh, efficiency of a connector, but Maybe instead of selecting nodes, what I have is I've asked my designer to give me several points, right? So free points in space where I know rivets are going to go, or maybe these are spot welds, or maybe these are, I don't know, pick your, pick your poison about what you want these connections to be. But you know that you have to model them. And you know that it would take you quite a long time to do these individually. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these points. There happen to be, I think, 100 and something, 80, 70. And I have the same connector control that we just talked about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play. And what we're going to see is that now all of these parts have been connected via these RB3 elements. Just a little spider of RB3s that is connecting uh, the, the nodes of both of these parts together. Okay. And connectors, they will kill you with options. Okay, So if we are not a 1,000% happy with how these look, I am going to say that there is an option to fix that. Whether you want that connector to be located at the point instead of actually the node. You know, there's all sorts of different projection options. The idea, though, is that now this part is connected together near all of these locations, and I essentially did it in one click. I grabbed all the points, told it how I wanted it to be connected, and I hit Realize. Okay. So the nice thing is that these, these connectors are their own type of entity. And what I mean by that is that um, I could delete you know, this frame or this intercostal or any of these parts and the connector will still exist there, um, which means this allows for part replacement. So if 
if we did change the geometry of one of these ribs, it's quite easy to just delete and replace. And then the connector still lives there. And remember what the connector holds. It holds this idea about what and how. And part of the question about what it connects is this tolerance. Okay. So nowhere does this connector say, I have to connect node ID XXXXX to these other nodes. All it's saying is that if something is close to here, I'm going to connect it. Okay. So that's the nice thing about these connectors that they can kind of be mesh or ID independent. Okay. Um, and the other thing is that they can be quickly updated. So all of these are RB3 elements right now. Um, I want to change this type of connection. So I'm going to grab all the connectors, 177 of them. I'm going to right click. I'm going to edit these connectors. Uh, actually, I want to um, do something that's called unrealize. I want to take all these connectors, right click, and unrealize. Okay, so that all that does is it kind of puts the the connector. In the background, it still exists. It didn't get deleted. It's just waiting for instructions. Okay. Um, in my connector browser, I can see all of these connectors. So now they're all yellow. Okay. And I want to go ahead and grab all these connectors and change their connector control. Okay. So let's make a new control. Uh, I'm going to make one. I'm going to actually rename this one. I'm going to call this, you know, uh, RB. 3C bush, because I actually want to be able to extract some loads out of all of these. So RB3 isn't going to cut it for me. I'm going to make a new new uh, new one, and we actually happen to have one in here called RB3 C bush RB3. So what I'm going to have here is I'm going to have an RB3 on one part connected via C bush, and then an RB3 on another part. Okay. Once again, you give it all of the pertinent information. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take all of these connectors, change them to this new control. I can right click and then I'll go realize. And now as I zoom into these, you will see that these are a different connection type. So they are no longer just the RB3. They now have this kind of a spider and then a normal C bush. Uh, and obviously, these C bush, you can give them the stiffness of their, uh, you know, uh, rivet or whatever they're trying to model, and then we can extract loads from there. Okay. So, you know, with just again a couple of clicks, I was able to swap maybe from a pretty standard RB connection. Maybe we just want to check, you know, modes or something. Uh, to now, now I can actually extract loads from these C bushes. Uh, again, I can change these connector types, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what I've showed here are just, these are just point connectors, right? So one point to one point, you can think of it as, as almost node to node, but let's just call them, uh, you think of these like a spot weld, a rivet, something that is you know kind of infinitesimally small. We have fasteners for bolts. We have fasteners for lines. You can think of these as seam welds. So instead of just selecting this one point, you know, I'd probably select this whole edge of elements or edge of nodes and say that I want to make a seam weld. And you can model those seam welds as shells, as solids, right? So this idea of what you connect and how you connect it exists in all of these different fastener types. Okay. Uh, and before we run out of time, the last little thing that I do want to show, it's hard to show on this model because there's just not a lot of uh, fidelity, but I, I'll, I'll do it over here. It might look a little silly, but this fastener one is kind of fun um, for all sorts of reasons. But um, I'll do this, and then once again check its link. And uh, the tolerance is always you know, too small for me. Uh, components, any number, that's fine. Hit OK. Um, and I got to make a new thing. I know it's just, this is taking a little longer than shit, but I want to show this. I, it's it's fun, and I'm all about fun. I mean, if we're not having fun, then we're just doing engineering. And uh, something that's cool about a bolt connector is it does have this option for finding holes. So if I selected one edge, like a node on, on an, an edge of a hole, it kind of understands that. Um, I do have these options, though, to say consider existing hole, or I can create a hole if there's none available. Um, 
so the new hole diameter. And you just have to be careful to like make sure your mesh and uh, this has to be pretty particular to the size. So um, 10, 25, probably about 25 is going to be the new diameter. If it's too big, it's not going to make it. If it's you know too small, it's going to look weird. Um, preserve, that's fine. Create hole. Okay, I think that should be fine. Check, check, check. Okay, uh, pick that uh, connector control. Hit realize. Uh, what we're going to see is it's going to cut out a little hole for your <coughs> your bolt. So again, depending on your mesh size, the hole will be more more holy or not holy. But I didn't have a lot of edge distance there to to work with. So um, you know, it can trim out holes. It, it can do all this stuff. So if you kind of know that you need a, a bolt every you know you know six or so inches, you can just kind of pick those nodes and do that. Um, Okay, so I wanted to show that for bolts. I think that's fun. And then the last thing, um, this was this. I made a, a really big assumption that, um, you know, I, I had a designer give me all these points. Like all of these points were were kind of um, uh, available. But there's also this kind of option, uh, this lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, to automatically create point connectors with what we call um, a pitch, right? So this idea of um, if I kind of grab a couple of parts, so I'm going to say grab this skin and uh, this, and I'm going to say, uh, you know, I want you to, you know, this is the search distance, and then every X number of units, so for this part 100, I want a free edge distance of 10, pitch distance, you know. This idea of every X number of, you know, degrees, go ahead and make a, a connector, um, hit play. And it's going to create these spot connectors. So you kind of see this idea of, you know, there's free edge distance, and then every X number of, of units, it's going to go, tip, 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 tip. it's going to kind of make these connectors. And you see that they're yellow right now, which means they're undefined. So this, this only has the idea of what it's connecting, but it doesn't have any control. So it doesn't know how it connects. So I can just come and pick that connector control, my RB3C bush, hit OK. And you're going to see that's going to go tick, 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 and make those. Okay. So uh, these are connectors, right? Really, really quick way to connect parts together, to do it in a very programmatic fashion, to um, you know be able to swap parts in and out. The connector exists independent of the parts that it's connecting to. Okay. Um, and I think this is really one thing that aerospace doesn't take all that much advantage of. Uh, and we usually make these connectors manually. So um, I do think this is something that could be quite of interest. Again, high level over here. We'll get into more of these as the series goes on. Um, but again, I wanted you to be aware of how to connect parts together after we left off this 1D meshing of manually making something like a bolt. Okay. Uh, so with that, I hope everyone uh, is staying safe, doing well, and we will see you next week.